prosecutors identified 37-year-old Demetrius Respect Divine, pictured on the right side of your screen, as the godfather of the black mob gangsters, and believe that 31-year-old Brandon B. Easy Mangum was one of the top generals in the blood Today, The national leader of the Pagan Motorcycle Club was sentenced to 75 years in prison. At age 49, officials say that means Christopher Baker will spend the rest of his life behind bars. Mastermind a plot to kidnap a Wake County prosecutor has been sentenced to life in prison, a sentence he will likely serve in our country's most secure prison. In this deep dive, we're uncovering the dark underworld of gang leadership in North Carolina, where notorious figures have dominated the criminal landscape through violence, drug trafficking, and ruthless control over their territories. From Donta Bush Jr. and the deadliest TK gang to Kelvin Melton, the godfather of the 1-8 Trey Bloods, these leaders have orchestrated a reign of terror that spanned across state lines and claimed numerous victims. We'll also explore the rise and fall of Christopher Lamar Baker, a leader of the Pagan Motorcycle Club, as well as the violent reign of Demetrius Devine and DeAndre Earp, both key figures in the Bloods and Crips organizations. Their stories reveal the lengths these gang leaders went to maintain power and the relentless efforts by law enforcement to bring them to justice. CBS North Carolina Steve Sprasia is live outside of the federal building in Raleigh to explain the judge's decision. Steve? Well, the federal judge decided that he should have life plus seven years. That is a sentence which guarantees that Calvin Melton will not be getting out of prison in his lifetime. And because of the vicious nature of the crime, because of his past criminal record, the Supermax prison in Colorado was the natural choice. The facts of this case show that Calvin Melton will attempt to commit crimes wherever he is, so he must be in a facility where that is not possible. Kevin Melton was convicted by a federal jury of devising a kidnapping plot in 2014 aimed at Wake County Assistant DA Colleen Jansen, who had put him in this jail. The 51-year-old was accused of using a cell phone from jail to orchestrate the crime, but the kidnappers went to the wrong address and grabbed Jansen's father, Frank, by mistake. The gang members then took Jansen to Atlanta, where he was held in tortured over a five-day period. Among the abuses, documents show that he was pistol-whipped by kidnappers who also used a stun gun on him dozens of times. He was eventually rescued by the FBI hours before the kidnappers were about to kill him. It was a case which sent shockwaves through the local law enforcement community. Kelvin Melton, a key figure in the notorious 1A Trace set of the Bloods. Melton, who has been in prison for over a decade, is not just any inmate, he's known as the godfather of 1A Trey, a gang that started as part of the United Blood Nation, UBN, in New York City's Rikers Island, but later disaffiliated while still maintaining ties to the larger Bloods organization. From inside the walls of Polk Correctional Institution in North Carolina, Melton orchestrated a chilling series of events that shocked authorities in the nation. Back in 2012, Melton was convicted of serious charges, including assault with a deadly weapon and being a violent habitual felon. Sentenced to life in prison, Melton didn't let that stop him from maintaining control over his gang. Using a contraband cell phone, he hatched a revenge plot unlike anything we've ever seen. Melton targeted both his state prosecutor and defense attorney, planning revenge kidnappings that would go on to include a botched attempt in Louisiana and a successful kidnapping in North Carolina. In March 2014, Melton's crew attempted to kidnap the sister of his defense attorney in Louisiana. They scoped out her home for days in constant communication with Melton, who gave them instructions from behind bars. However, that plan was called off after co-conspirators were spooked and fled the scene. But things escalated quickly in April, when the gang successfully kidnapped Frank Jansen, the father of Melton's state prosecutor, in North Carolina. Armed with guns, the kidnappers stormed Jansen's home, forced him into a vehicle, and took him across state lines to Georgia. For several days, Jansen was held captive, enduring brutal physical attacks while Melton called the shots from prison, ordering his men to kill Jansen when their initial attempt to extort ransom money failed. The kidnappers even started preparing for his burial, but just before the unthinkable could happen, the FBI swooped in. Thanks to a combination of high-tech surveillance and wiretaps, the FBI traced phone records that led them straight to the kidnappers' hideout. 
They rescued Jansen and arrested the co-conspirators, but the story didn't end there. Investigators quickly turned their attention to Melton, discovering that the same phone used to communicate with the kidnappers had been making calls from inside Polk Correctional. When officers confronted Melton, they found him destroying the phone, but it was too late. The FBI was able to recover the broken pieces and confirmed that it was the same device used to orchestrate both the Louisiana and North Carolina kidnapping plots. This case is a stark reminder of the lengths gang leaders will go to maintain their influence, even from behind bars. It also highlights the incredible work done by law enforcement to take down a dangerous operation before it could end in tragedy. Stay tuned as we dig deeper into the life of Kelvin Melton, his role in the 1-8 Trey Bloods, and how authorities are working to dismantle these criminal organizations. DeAndre Earp organized gang crime. These federal warrants not only are for these suspected gang members' phone, but they highlight a deadly history of the STK gang, not only here in Wake County, but all across the nation with crimes here in Wake County dating back six years. This is 24-year-old Donta Bush. Four days ago, Bush, who lives in Wake County, was indicted on five federal charges. The FBI and Raleigh police believe Bush is in a leadership role with the STK gang, or Shoot to Kill. The FBI says he and others have been committing violent crimes, including murder, dating back to at least 2019. Raleigh police and the FBI state as a result of this ongoing investigation into the STK gang, many of those identified have been arrested and charged for crimes, including five firearm violations, federal drug distribution violations, armed robbery shootings. Bush is currently in jail under a federal hold. Bush was recently indicted on a kidnapping charge that happened in Raleigh in January of this year. Warrants state the victim was forced into one of the suspect vehicles at gunpoint and transported to Wendell. The suspects bound the victim's hands and feet with duct tape and placed a plastic bag over his head. Victim one was shot in the hip by the driver. After being shot, the victim successfully opened the door and jumped from the moving car. Warrants also state Bush's gang is connected to a murder in Raleigh. In February of 2021, Steve Martin was shot in Raleigh as a result of an attempted drug-related burglary. Four suspects, all members of Bush's organization, were arrested and charged with Bush has also been charged in Georgia for stealing a car and taking police on a chase. Raleigh police also found seven guns and two assault rifles inside a stolen vehicle he was driving. We're diving into the shocking case of Donta Bush Jr., a 24-year-old who has been indicted on a series of serious federal charges. Bush faces five counts, including conspiracy to kidnap, interference with commerce by robbery, and discharging a firearm during a violent crime, all tied to his alleged leadership role in the dangerous STK gang. Authorities have connected Bush to a string of crimes dating back to 2019, with the FBI and Raleigh Police Department revealing disturbing details of his involvement. One of the most chilling incidents occurred in January 2024, when Bush and other suspects allegedly kidnapped a man at gunpoint. The victim was bound with duct tape, had a plastic bag placed over his head, and was shot in the hip before managing to escape by jumping from a moving vehicle. Miraculously, the victim survived, but this case has raised serious concerns about gang violence in the Raleigh area. Bush is also facing charges for car thefts in both North Carolina and Georgia, where he led police on a dangerous chase. With a total of nine firearms, including assault rifles, found in a stolen vehicle linked to him, the authorities are treating this case as a major breakthrough in their fight against gang-related crime. Well, federal prosecutors tell me they believe the streets of Raleigh are safer tonight after they got convictions of two gang leaders who they say terrorized downtown Raleigh for parts of two decades. Prosecutors identified 37-year-old Demetrius Respect Divine pictured on the right side of your screen as the godfather of the black mob gangsters and believe that 31-year-old Brandon B. Easy Mangum was one of the top generals in the blood set that they called well-organized and focused on selling drugs, running guns, and prostitution and that they wouldn't hesitate to rival gang members in their territory. Even with this conviction, they believe the gang still poses a risk to society.
I think you saw that they are. They came into the courtroom. They tried to intimidate witnesses. They tried to intimidate the court. So I think they're very much still a threat to Raleigh. And we're going to keep working at it. Demetrius R. Devine, also known as Respect, a former leader in the Bloods gang who has been sentenced to four consecutive life terms, plus an additional 20 years behind bars. This shocking case has captivated attention after Devine, 37, from Garner, NC, was convicted on multiple federal charges, including conspiracy to participate in racketeering, RICO, deletion in aid of racketeering, deletion with a firearm, drug trafficking, and conspiracy to commit witness tampering. Judge James C. Deaver III handed down this massive sentence and recommended that Devine serve his time at the Supermax Federal Prison in Colorado, the nation's most secure prison. Devine, who led the Gangsta Killer Bloods GKB, before forming the Black Mob Gangstas BMG, and the Donald G. Family DGF, ran a violent criminal operation in Raleigh, NC. According to court documents and trial testimony, Devine and his co-defendant, Brandon Jowan Mangum, aka Be Easy, were involved in a range of violent crimes, including deletion, attempted deletion, and assaults. The BMG slash DGF gang maintained control over their territory in the Haywood Street area of Raleigh through fear and violence, terrorizing both gang members and innocent civilians alike. This two-week trial, which concluded in October 2019, laid bare the brutal tactics Devine used to solidify his position as the godfather of the gang. From ordering deletions to organizing large-scale drug trafficking, Devine's reign of terror lasted for two decades. Prosecutors presented chilling evidence of his role as the leader of a violent criminal organization that dominated the streets and went to extreme lengths to maintain power. U.S. Attorney Robert Higdon didn't mince words when describing the impact of Devine's criminal activities, noting that these gangs had operated virtually unchecked for years, terrorizing communities just miles from the federal courthouse. Devine's life sentences now serve as a clear message to those involved in gang-related violence that the consequences of such actions are severe and justice will be served. Today, the national leader of the Pagan Motorcycle Club was sentenced to 75 years in prison. At age 49, officials say that means Christopher Baker will spend the rest of his life behind bars. Baker, who lived and ran the Pagans from Raleigh, was convicted last year of drug trafficking, firearm, and money laundering charges. The Pagans are regarded by law enforcement as an outlaw motorcycle gang. Departments, covert operations and surveillance, as well as federal wiretaps to collect evidence up and down the eastern seaboard and right here in eastern North Carolina. Christopher Baker was a prolific trafficker, trafficking over 260 kilos of highly pure with nearly 100% purity. Of those 260 odd kilos that he trafficked in the two years before his arrest, there's a photograph to my right of five kilograms of crystal on the back of a Honda that was part of this operation. Christopher Lamar Baker, a national leader of the infamous Pagan Motorcycle Club, who has just been sentenced to 75 years in federal prison. Baker, 49, of Raleigh, was taken down by Operation Diamond Ice, a massive multi-agency operation aimed at dismantling outlaw motorcycle gangs across the country. His crimes included drug trafficking, firearms violations, and money laundering, all part of his violent reign as a key player in the Pagan's criminal empire. Baker wasn't just any member of the Pagan Motorcycle Club. He was part of the 13, the group of top national leaders who controlled the gang's drug trade and illegal weapons trafficking. Over the course of a 15-month investigation, federal agents discovered that Baker had trafficked nearly 600 pounds across the East Coast, with weapons and drugs coming from suppliers in the Atlanta area. He would have pagan members drive him from North Carolina to Atlanta to pick up his stock, then distribute the drugs and firearms across the region. But Baker wasn't just a drug dealer, he was also a violent enforcer. Known for brutal punishments, he ordered a pagan pledge's fingers to be cut off with a table saw for allegedly stealing from another member. He even ordered the deletion of someone who sold him fake drugs. Fortunately, law enforcement intervened, placing the target in protective custody before the hit could be carried out. 
The Pagan Motorcycle Club is one of the most notorious outlaw biker gangs worldwide, and their violent reputation was on full display earlier this year when a member, Jonas Barrett Padilla, was deleted by members of a rival gang in Raleigh. Baker's rise through the ranks from Raleigh chapter president to national leader illustrates the dangerous influence these organizations can wield. Despite the arrest of Baker and several other members, authorities say the Pagans are far from finished. Although Operation Diamond Ice led to the seizure of 46 firearms, including illegal machine guns, and the arrest of 12 Pagans, the organization structure allows for lower-ranking members to step into leadership roles. Law enforcement officials warn that the battle against these violent gangs isn't over yet. As we've seen, the influence of gang leaders like Donta Bush Jr., Kelvin Melton, and Christopher Baker stretches far beyond their local territories, impacting communities across the state and even the East Coast. These criminals, whether operating from behind bars or orchestrating crimes on the streets, have left a lasting mark on North Carolina's criminal landscape. However, their downfall through relentless law enforcement efforts and federal indictments serves as a powerful reminder that no one is above the law. As these leaders face life sentences or decades behind bars, their convictions bring hope for safer streets and a brighter future for communities once terrorized by their violent organizations. Stay tuned as we continue to explore the ongoing battle against organized crime and the figures who leads them.